Greetings, this is Daniel Tal from Placemaker, and I am going to review Placemaker for Revit over the next series of videos and show you the different ways you can use it, how it works in general, and the credit system to import in all the 3D data into Revit. Placemaker allows you to import in terrain, and you can control the mesh of the terrain, so you can control the size and the granularity of the terrain. And in some locations, depending on where it is, you can look on our website, there's really high level of available terrain data. So for example, for the United States, it's from one meter to 10 meter. For the United Kingdom, it's about one meter on average. And for Europe, it's anywhere from one meter to 30 meter. It does vary. You can also import in the high resolution aerial and place it onto the terrain as you can with placemaker other features the buildings the roads the paths and the walks so it's an integrated system with the terrain modeling aspect of it and i'm going to do the next i'm going to show you how that works in this video i'm going to start by going to the placemaker tab and i'm going to import in a location and bring in the basic aerial map and here i have a location in Seattle, nice little hilly area. I'm going to select the area. And I'm going to do just a little small sliver of this location and import that in. And that geolocates and starts the process for me to import in all the different data sets, including the terrain. So before I do anything else, I'm assuming that I'm going to be working on this terrain. So I'm going to go to import terrain. And with the import terrain option, I have the ability to adjust the grid spacing. Obviously, the tighter the grid, the larger the mesh size in terms of polygon count. Now, the reason why we've provided this option is that for some locations, you have one meter to 10 meter or 30 meter terrain. So the more refined the grid, the better the quality of the terrain itself. Now, the one thing here is we have no way of indicating as of right now what the quality for any given location is but you can just play around with it I typically do anything between 20 to 30 feet I'm going to click save import click on here and it's going to start the import process of the terrain and here again just as a reminder it requires some placemaker credits to import the terrain. I'm using the pay-as-you-go version, so it's 12 credits for this terrain. If I was a subscriber, it would cost me six credits. I'm gonna click confirm order, and it's gonna start the import process of drawing the terrain. So take it about, well, oh, that was very quick, there it goes. I want to adjust the contour interval here, so I'm, I'm at massing and sight. I'm going to go to the settings, site settings tab, and I'm going to set this to 20 feet and hit apply. And now we have a better opportunity to see the terrain. There you go. The next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to import in a high resolution aerial. So I'm going to go to Im placemaker tab, import imagery. I'm going to use near map little bit more expensive but I'm going to use the high quality setting and do save import and click on here and we'll get the credit window not bad though it's going to give me a very nice high definition aerial it'll take it about a minute for this to do this and import it in it's going to download all the images and then apply it to the terrain and the imports done and I'm going to zoom in here we have a really highly defined aerial. You can even make it more refined if I'd gone another higher setting up, which it could be up to seven and a half centimeters or three centi three and a half centimeters to up to seven centimeters. And there you have that. I'm gonna now import in the roads, the buildings, and the water to show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go to import buildings. I'm gonna use OSM, I also have Microsoft, but we'll use OSM. I'm pretty confident the data for this one is here. One thing that you have to check is merge with surface. It's checked. I'm going to click Save Import, click on here, 
Now, since I selected a tile, you can see the tile outlines, it's saying, do I want to import that information for that tile or do I want to do it for the entire topo surface? Topo surface? I'm going to say yes to do the entire topo surface. If I click no, it'll just do the sub region. Hit yes. And we'll, we'll wait for it to import in and place all these buildings onto the train. Again, here's the credit system. I'm going to say confirm a credit. Now again, since if I was a subscriber, I would pay nothing for the buildings or use no credits in here as requires 31 credits. I'm going to confirm the order and it's going to start importing and downloading in the buildings. It's going to generate 362 buildings for this particular location. No. There we have the buildings are imported in. I'm going to go ahead and import in some of these other items as well. Same thing. I'm going to import roads. You want to make sure that merge with surface is checked and then click save and import. Click on the topo again, click yes. And it will now import in. I think there's a road right there. Confirm the credits and right there and it's generating the road segments and it's going to place them on the terrain. There's the roads imported. I'll rotate the view so you can see it here. And now I'll do paths. Probably no trains. I'm going to, oh, wrong button there. Import paths. Same thing. I have to click merge with surface. Click there and hit yes. We'll bring up the credit window real quickly. finished importing the trails and I'm gonna do water next now sometimes I prefer the water to be just defined by the aerial but for rendering purposes if I bring this into Lumion I can add a water texture to it which would make it look really nice and last but not least I'm gonna see if there's any trees that we can import in for this location, again, merge with surface. I'm gonna click yes. Confirm the order. So we got some trees. The tree data set is sometimes sporadic, but everything else seems to be pretty consistent. And still it adds a nice quality to it. And that's how you import in a terrain, aerial, buildings, roads, trails, whatever, into Revit using this process. Here are a sequence of some rendered views out of Revit. Thanks for checking us out, and please enjoy Placemaker for Revit.